We all know the drill when it comes to RPGs. You start off small time, leveling up and fighting your way through enemies that near the end of the game basically can't even touch you. Monster Hunter doesn't follow this basic structure however, instead it only offers players upgrades via equipment that makes you slightly stronger than you were before. The quests revolve around hunting beasts across several different maps, gathering items from specific locations and a seemingly endless supply of different things to do, from fishing to crafting and cooking. It's one of those games that if you're not careful you'll find yourself losing hours upon hours to. Squaring off against the various oversized creatures feels a bit like Shadow of the Colossus and its massive boss battles, but instead of taking the form of puzzle platforming, Capcom's action RPG goes for more of a test of endurance. It was released alongside the new 3DS, and as a result it featured sharper textures, faster loading times, and of course proper camera control with the C-Stick on the new handheld. It's without a out one of the most graphically impressive games on the system. Compared to the flat planes of Monster Hunter 3, the stark difference in terrain is another point in its favour, as it not only gives players more interesting landscapes to explore, with a much broader sense of verticality, but it also creates more strategic battle arenas to duel in. Each of these monsters feature complex animations, and the detailed models move through the new multi-tiered environments with only the rare bit of clipping or oddities that were prominent in the previous effort. Simply put, if you're willing to let Monster Hunter 4 consume your life, you're in for one of the most delightful and addictive portable games on offer. Over the years, the Metal Gear Solid series has been one of those collections of games that have shaped me, not only as a gamer, but as a person as well. The thought-provoking narrative and exquisite gameplay of each entry has always been something that has excited me from each release to the next, and the 3D remake of Snake Eater on the 3DS was no exception. Packing this classic into a portable adventure was no easy feat, however, but Kojima Productions took on the challenge and delivered one of the most graphically impressive games on the handheld. Now I won't bore you with the story as everyone and their dog has likely played Snake Eater at this point, so let's get right into the visuals. The original Metal Gear Solid 3 demonstrated what the PlayStation 2 was capable of, and Snake Eater 3D does the same for the 3DS. Every area is absolutely dripping with detail. You can see the grass move as things crawl through it, hear the sloshing of nearby streams or the call of an unseen bird, and notice the rich variety of colours and textures of the jungle and buildings. Each cutscene from Snake's introduction to the stunning ending is just as beautifully animated and portrayed as before. Of course, turning on the 3D literally adds an entirely new dimension to the gameplay, which makes sneaking around all the more engrossing. The only drawback is the occasional frame rate dip when there's a lot of activity on screen. Some battles and guard confrontations slow to a crawl at certain points, but it's nothing drastic however, but it is noticeable. By no means is this the best way to experience this time classic, but having the ability to take it on the go with the added 3D effect on top, it's an incredibly appealing package that will likely satisfy longtime fans of the series as well as newcomers looking to jump into the franchise for the first time. If you can find it on the cheap, it would make a welcome addition to your collection. Kirby has always been a kind of blank canvas for Nintendo. Every time someone inside the company has a new idea, they usually go to HAL Laboratory to see how it can be implemented within a video game. Although the basic mechanics of Planet Robobot can be very simple at the beginning stages, the potential they have and the way they are married with other aspects of the game like the designs of levels and power-ups is truly sensational. The main feature of the adventure though comes in the form of the Robobot armor, a robot that can be piloted by the player, which Kirby can take over and not only break obstacles that Kirby cannot break alone, but it can also copy abilities like Kirby himself. Unfortunately, not all of the abilities have a Robobot equivalent, but the new skills that do are varied and interesting. Fighting is not the only thing that Kirby has going for it. The stages have a range of puzzles that for the most part are not obtuse, but not terribly simple either. They require having Kirby use both abilities on foot and in the Robobot armor creatively in order to get the collectibles in the game, which unlock more stages to play and are necessary for fighting the boss of each world. Now one of the things that is really worth 
highlighting is the way in which Planet Robobot takes advantage of the depth that the 3D effect of the 3DS provides the player. Although the game is very much a platformer that moves in two dimensions, the reality is that the game seeks to be more than just that. Virtually all of the levels use different layers to make the exploration, combat and solution of different puzzles much more interesting in every way. Planet Robobot follows the adage really well and it delivered on so many levels. The Robobot armor added something new to the gameplay while keeping the formula familiar, the design being solid with the futuristic theme and music that's just great to listen to on its own. If you didn't get around to it when it first released, it is well worth going back and picking this one up today. EX Troopers is a spin-off to Capcom's Lost Planet franchise. It shares much in common with that series, such as the over-the-shoulder gunplay as well as mech-based combat that helps the gameplay shine. As the player, you'll have the choice of taking two different weapons into the field, typically a weaker and short-ranged firearm with more ammo and a stronger, more versatile weapon respectively. The game also features melee combat, which sees you launching enemies into the air to juggle them with your firearms, very much like Devil May Cry. Add to this a pretty handy jetpack and you'll find yourself darting across each arena in style. It's not all just simply about fighting though, as there's a pretty comprehensive crafting system in place to facilitate a way for players to improve their characters over time. Armor and weapon upgrades are created from gathering materials and require paying vendors with points, which are rewarded after successful missions. Points can also be used to purchase food items that provide various short-term buffs that can really help out in tight situations. Just like in Lost Planet, Thermal energy plays a huge role as well, but is now used for charging up special attacks and restoring the life bar, rather than for survival or currency. Now graphically, EX Troopers on the 3DS is stunning. The vibrant and almost playful cell shaded aesthetic adds a real comic book feel to the action, which is further accentuated by the cutscenes that play on this even further. Grand, open environments play host to each encounter, which allows them to play out in an almost cinematic fashion. The gameplay and overall feel of the game is enhanced even further thanks to a solid 60 frames per second that keeps the action fast and responsive. If you're at all fond of the old Lost Planet games or are simply looking for a quality shooter on a 3DS, EX Troopers is well worth seeking out. Resident Evil Mercenaries is all about survival and killing as many enemies as possible within a strict time limit. The main aim is to gather the highest score possible throughout each run, and there's several ways to do this. But the regular course of action is to simply keep your combo going. Every time an enemy is defeated, a combo begins, and after 10 seconds, the combo ends. So the player must continuously take out as many enemies as possible in order to achieve several of the in-game rewards, such as new characters, costumes, and skills to further enhance your prospects of higher scores. Now there's 8 characters in total, all lifted straight from the history of the series, with old timers like Chris and Jill, along with fan favourites like Barry, complete with his cheesy one-liners. So if you're a long-time fan, there is a lot to love here. The game runs on Capcom's MT Framework mobile engine, and boy did they know how to get the most out of the hardware they were using. This game looks drop-dead gorgeous, textures are well-defined, the characters well-detailed, and everything runs smoothly, but the game does start to trip once the action heats up, which is quite understandable considering how many bodies can be on screen at any one time, and thankfully it's nothing that hurts the overall quality of the game as a whole. The 3D effect adds a lot to the experience, and actually aids in navigating environments due to the much more prominent sense of depth. When you're frantically trying to make your way around each map, all the while being pursued by waves of the undead, it provides a real advantage. But as you would expect, there are some downsides to turning it on, one being the frame rate, which takes a bit of a hit, making some of the more intense moments quite cumbersome thanks to the added loss of frames. But with dozens of hours of content, through unlockable characters, costumes, leveling up skills, and collecting the 50 medals the game has, as well as earning high scores with each character, Resident Evil Mercy scenarios will have you fending off hordes of zombies for hours on end. If there is one word that could sum up Iron Fall Invasion, it would simply have to be ambition. It's essentially a third person shooter that wears its inspiration on its sleeves, that being Epic's Gear of War series, and at first it will look like a mere clone of concept, but thankfully it brings to the table some of its own ideas to help set it apart. Ironfall has a neat mechanic that ties actions to your health, 
By way of a meter known as heart rate, there are certain thresholds you cannot cross unless you take damage, but sprinting and shooting will raise your heart rate ever so slightly, forcing you back into cover to lower it faster. While it may seem like an action hindering design choice, it actually makes things more strategic, as avoiding enemy fire altogether will inherently limit your meter. Now the game is split up into 11 missions that generally see the player moving from room to room and taking out anything that moves, but it's not just about mindless shooting, as each level is sprinkled with a series of challenges that require the player to complete specific tasks, such as not letting your heart rate drop below a certain threshold or only being given a limited amount of ammo to take on the enemies. It sets up some rather challenging moments that will likely satisfy those looking for something more than just mindless shooting. Of course, the most notable aspect of the game are the visuals themselves, that just look unbelievable when running on the system in your hands. It really does feel like a pocket-sized Gears of War, with each special effect such as muzzle flashes and explosions ramping up the action and resulting in not only believable but more importantly engaging gunfights that will keep you on your toes. Add to this a pretty solid 60 FPS count which is of course halved when turning on the game's 3D function but as with most games on the 3DS the added sense of depth really adds to the gameplay. If you've never had the chance of playing this one back when it first released Ironfall is well worth seeking out. Ever Oasis is a hybrid that mixes the popular town building mechanics found in the Animal Crossing series with the action and sense of adventure found in the Zelda games. You play as a young boy known as Tethu, who has the ability to create magical safe havens known as an oasis. After your brother is attacked by an evil no-gooder, with his oasis being laid to ruin, you set out to help and gather up enough resources to not only rebuild the haven, but take down those responsible for its destruction. While the game is centered around building these spaces, there are times where you will have to venture out into the great unknown to seek out residents or explore nearby caves for materials. This is where the combat comes into play, as the overworld is inhabited by a surprisingly diverse set of monsters. It's a pretty simple affair with Tethu possessing a basic sword and tornado attack that helps bring an end to any threats you may meet along the way. Graphically, Ever Oasis is a really impressive game. The cutesy, cel-shaded visuals fit the theme of the game perfectly and managed to create a captivating world that's just waiting to be explored. The vast open plains that occupy the overworld look fantastic on the small screen, which really adds to the sense of adventure the game is going for. While many of the environments heavily feature sand, they don't get repetitive due to the developers taking advantage of all the different colours of the desert. Sand may be tan or possibly more white and turns into a beautiful shade of greenish blue at night. Tethu is also super cute and the enemy designs are creative and varied. It all comes together to create one of the most visually pleasing 3DS games you can grab on the handheld. The 3DS wasn't known for its abundance of fighting games. Of course, there were a few of note like Smash and Dead or Alive that I mentioned in episode 1 of this series, but when it came to visuals, Street Fighter 4 was just as impressive as well. As with most games in the franchise, you choose from a range of characters before you take them through one of the several modes that make up the game. The real meat and potatoes can be found in the arcade option, which not only serves as the main path, but also as a means to unlock several secrets that will keep you coming back for more. When it comes to gameplay, anyone familiar with Street Fighter will instantly feel right at home, with each character sharing an array of basic attacks as well as a string of unique special moves. Now graphically, Street Fighter 4 on the 3DS is nothing short of incredible. Each fighter is lovingly detailed with various effects such as facial animations as well as realistic clothing that sways and blows with each and every move. Flicking on the 3D results in an immersive fighting experience, albeit with a few caveats as the frame rate is cut in half from 60 to 30 in order to accommodate the extra load on the system. Other concessions were made as well, such as backgrounds being devoid of any animations, which is a bit of a disappointment on first look. It's clear some corners had to be cut, and to be honest you'll be too busy slamming the crap out of your opponent to even notice. When it comes to fighting games on the 3DS, Street Fighter 4 stands as a real testament to what the handheld could do, especially when in the hands of the right developers. 
Put simply, Dragon Quest VIII is one of the best RPGs made even better on the 3DS. It doesn't feature any complex battle mechanics or novel progression systems, but it puts together a competent adventure that can stand tall amongst the similar experiences on the handheld. What's new to the 3DS version are a number of quality of life improvements that go a long way in making the game an even more pleasant experience to play. The most notable change being that random encounters are completely gone and are instead replaced by icons representing the enemies within the world. Having the ability to explore the vast areas the game offers up without interruption was such a welcome change that sees you not having to run into a battle literally every 10 seconds. The 3DS version also allows you to double the battle speed, a much needed addition which doesn't need much explanation. To top this off, it is sprinkled with new story content and a few new dungeons that should entice veteran players due to the added context they afford the story. Now graphically, while the draw distance distance for environments is much smaller than that in the original version of Dragon Quest VIII, its visuals are still more than serviceable. Toriyama's character and monster designs are rendered very well by the graphic engine, and the small visual degradation from the PlayStation 2 release is in no way enough to make the title less engrossing. Thanks to the smaller screen estate of the handheld, you'll hardly even notice these subtle changes, as each attack, spell and action within battle is just as flashy with a range of special effects that add a real weight to each move you carry out. Unfortunately, Square Enix opted not to include any sort of 3D functionality for this version of the game, which seems like a bit of an odd decision considering the stereoscopic 3D feature is the main selling point of the handheld. Regardless though, 3D or not, there is no doubting that Dragon Quest VIII on the 3DS is a worthwhile journey and will no doubt satisfy fans of the genre both new and old. Ocarina of Time is a game that needs no introduction, as it stands as one of the most memorable adventures of all time. This is no doubt one of the reasons it made its way to the 3DS, completely revamped for the handheld with many new features and more importantly, updated visuals. Every area in the game has much greater detail and is also presented in a higher resolution. Best of all, the rather bland pre-rendered backgrounds of most interiors are now clearly created with a large number of polygons and managed to make Hyrule feel like a living and breathing space, not just a set piece. One big change to the game is that the FPS was bumped 20 to 30. I know it doesn't sound like much, but it really made the game run much smoother than its original counterpart on the N64. The developers at Grizo made it a priority to model all of the characters and environments after their original artwork, and doing so gave us a Zelda adventure that greatly surpasses that of the original. Facial expressions are crisp. Link actually has fingers and hand movements which are noticeable whilst doing things such as playing the ocarina. When the 3D is turned on, you do sacrifice a little anti-aliasing, but it is still nothing short of an amazing experience. Not only does it just look great, but it even helps out in battle, because the added depth gives you a better sense of the distance between you and your opponent, so you don't accidentally run into them or have your attack hit just short of where the enemy is standing. After playing through this title, you will swear up and down that Ocarina of Time always looked this good, but trust me, it hasn't. Well that does it for today's video, keep an eye out for part 3 as that will be coming up soon, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get notified about new videos which release every Monday and Thursday. You can follow me on all of the socials to stay up to date, and also join my growing community on Discord to meet many like-minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd like to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters, Rhino, Skilljim, Shuden, Richard, Amy, Daniel, Paul, Dio, Omar, Strider, Pierre, Carl, Awesome Jacket Dude, GameCube Galaxy, and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining my Discord or supporting the channel through Patreon, you'll find all of these links in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I'll catch you on Monday.